This is Sharon Calvert and I'm with Eye on Tampa Bay. And today I have Steve Meisman with me. And Steve is running for Pasco County School Board District 1. So welcome, Steve. Hi there, it's nice to meet you. I've heard so much about you. Well, let's start off by telling the voters a little bit about yourself. Uh, okay, uh, I'm 51 years old. I, my wife, uh, I've been married since high school, 32 years. Um, uh, we've got two kids. Um, I'm the son of a of a of a man of a Marine, a U.S. Marine. Um, he was born in the Dust Bowl. Um, he's my I've had entrepreneurs all throughout my family. Um, I've my <clears throat> my wife and I started a aerospace manufacturing business 21, 22 years ago now, quite a while, and um, had some fun with that. Um, and it's done pretty well. Um, and my father was an entrepreneur. My grandfather was an entrepreneur. He sold steel wheel tractors forever ago. Um, um, so then we, we got into this school thing. We had homeschooled both of our kids. Um, uh, our daughter is 12 and our son is 16. So that gives you an idea of the grade. We homeschooled both of them until our son was in eighth grade. And, and then he, he started public school because we live kind of rurally and uh, there's no kids on our block and they needed to make friends. So we, um, we wanted them uh, to, to have a, you know, the best chance possible. So uh, a friend of ours told us that Cypress Creek middle school slash high school, they had an engineering program. And my son is, uh, he desperately wants to become an engineer, uh, kind of carrying on the family tradition. And so, uh, we put them in there, and um, it, it immediately <laughs> day one was a difficult uh, thing. Here we had it was it was uh, can I say it um, two well it was not pleasant. There were some problems with two of the students. How's <laughs> that? Um, and he, um, he he you know he did well with his, his studies. He got he's a 4.2 GPA, um, and he had maintained the 4.2 GPA throughout his homeschooling and classical training. Um, and so then, uh, but we had a lot of problems and I kept on noticing cultural Marxism, um, and, uh, a lot of anti-Western, uh, anti-human, anti-American, uh, things being taught in the classroom where they would celebrate Karl Marx, or they would, um, they would talk about how evil capitalism is or how, how bad Western values are. So, um, those are things that got my attention. Um, but I guess... And and is that uh, what drove you then to, to uh, take that step to run for school board? Or, or tell us uh, why. Why did you decide that that, that was a step that you felt you needed to take? I, was, uh, I couldn't get a desired result uh, by following the process. So it, we, would, we would go to the school. We'd go to the teacher. We'd go to the, to, to, to the counselor. We'd go to the vice principals. And... We would, we would, we would, we had a really hard time getting any kind of satisfactory result or where anybody would do anything about it. I mean, when they're comparing Karl Marx to Jesus and Santa and saying that democracy, uh, that, 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 that socialism was created to save democracy, well, you know, and I can't get any traction with such a preposterous thing that's being taught in the classrooms. That, so then I took that to the, to the district level. And um, uh, I was placed on, a the materials review committee for pasco county and their job is to if, if a parent has a complaint about um <clears throat> some material being taught in class then this or if we have to review source material uh that's controversial so to speak so then we would take a look at that source material and either approve it or not approve it and then send it to the give a vote and then the, then the district makes their decision based on our vote <clears throat> the problem is is that the, the, what I have found is that this committee rubber stamps whatever comes down from either some recalcitrant teacher that's for pushing LGBT on the students or uh, or the state that's pushing down, uh, uh, basically ignoring how the KKK murdered Black people. And they're just going to ignore that, which is uh, absurd to me. So um, those are things that, that, that I found that this committee to be, it's rather useless. It, it doesn't. It doesn't accomplish. I don't think it reflects the values of Pasco County. Put it that way. So, so I don't. You, I think it. 
So you decided to file. So yes, that, that, well, when I actually, no, I actually, I taught, I went ahead, I, 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 people have been asking me to do this and I'm like, nobody wants me. I'm not an academic. I'm not, uh, I'm, 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 I'm obnoxious. I don't, why would anybody want me to do this? Right. Well, it turns out a ton of people want me to do it. Um, but I, I talked myself out of it for a year and then I taught, I, I, got, I got the opportunity to teach an engineering class for five weeks and it really taught me a lot about myself and I learned a lot about kids and I learned why teachers are having such bad behavior. Why as a parent, I experienced teachers behaving badly because I felt like, you know, I can't just complain about these people. I, I need to walk a mile in their shoes. And here is a golden opportunity to do that and to serve my community. So I, do, I taught discipline without punishment. So the kids basically, uh, they're just, there's no consequence to their actions. Um, then, uh, and so the teachers are, are treated badly by the students. They're treated badly by many of the parents, um, and they're not supported by by administration. Well, now I know why the teachers are frustrated, and and they don't, they just don't have the 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 the, the oomph. The they, they've lost the spirit. So um, uh, I, when I observed that, uh, that really, and then I met, and there was a couple of students that were just amazing kids. And that was like, you know, these kids deserve to have something, deserve representation. And I met a few wonderful teachers and I'm like, these teachers deserve representation. So I just said, you know, you got to get over yourself, Steve, and, uh, and just do what your conscience has, has been telling you to do for a long time and file and run for school board. So what would be, what are your top three issues or uh, accomplishments you would like to see if elected? I would like, I, I, I don't, when I want, look at these kids, I see despair. There's, there, you know, when I was in high school, we, 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 we were walking between classes, we were shooting the breeze, we were, we were, it was happy, we were jovial, you know, and then you get into class and, 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 you know, I mean, I was kind of a clown, but even I settled down and, and tried to pay attention, right? But I was happy. That's not, I didn't observe happiness with these kids. I see lots of anxiety. And the anxiety is the result of all this woke, cancel culture, social justice pressure. These concepts are, are, are too big for children. If we're turning children, these schools are turning children into activists. And I think I've never met a tranquil activist, activist, right? So as I observe these kids and I see that they have, they have lots of tension, they don't, they, they don't have tranquility. It's because of all of the pressure. Because when, you, when I was in school, we were worried about saying something stupid in front of a pretty girl or, you know, having a zit or whatever, right? Now, if you say something that violates the moving target of social justice approved speech, two hours later, a thousand kids have repeated it on Instagram. And how, how, how can a kid, why, why are there so many suicides, right? I mean, these, these kids, they just don't know how to process it. They don't have the, the mental faculties to process it. So that, that was a big thing, getting rid of the wokeness. And, and I, I'm not saying that we need to, to not care for, for kids that have, that have gender confusion, or, but that's not the school's domain. That's the parent's domain. So while these, all children should have, we have compassion for all children, we have protection for all children, but the school is not qualified to service this kind of thing. And we can't cram this down the throats of children who aren't having this confusion. That's the first so, thing. So are you looking to actually bring back, uh, you know, the three R's? Oh, well, I mean, reading, writing, reading, arithmetic. writing, and arithmetic, because yeah. that seems to be the biggest issue uh, that we're finding in our academia, regardless of whether it's K through 12 or, or higher ed, that people are being are graduating without having yes. the basics of the knowledge that you have to have to continue learning. Yeah, and that's that's actually my third thing. The third big priority for me is more rigorous uh, curriculum. When I look at the math books, it's it's pathetic. The kid, my daughter's sixth grade advanced math class had her using number lines to figure uh, ratios and fractions. It's just, and, and tape measures, right? It's, it is so like counting change, we're gonna use a number line to determine change. It, 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 the, the idea, the rigor of memorizing multiplication tables, 
uh, using multiplication to solve long division. These are all not taught, it's just not available. So to me, we should be looking at Saxon math for curriculum for books and Rod and staff for our grammar, things like that that teach sentence diagramming, uh, the full gamut of you know nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, pronouns, all that stuff, right? Oh, well, I remember those. <laughs> well, wait, let me, let me get to number two real quick. I'll okay. cover that in 30 seconds. So the second thing is the teachers, or actually just everybody's compensation and uh, their, their happiness with their job. The number one complaint I get from teachers and bus drivers is, is, now, is they're not treated well. It's not money. It's not, they're not treated well. So we need to restore authority in the classroom. The teachers need to be able to write lunch detentions and after school detentions. And, and they need to not be overturned by administration. And then if they write a referral, that referral will be met with some punishment. I don't care what, if, it's, if it's picking up trash in the hallways or if it's in-school suspension, detention. Uh, there's, there's a beautiful program in Hillsborough County where the, the, it was implemented where they would have the core classes in the first periods of the day, first four periods. And then the last half of the day was in-school suspension. These are for the, the these are, uh, you know, recurrent troublemakers that are always getting into trouble more. But you know what? Every school that that was implemented in, they had a one letter grade improvement. Every school. Wow. So that's worthwhile. So I want to I want to give the teachers and the bus drivers their authority back so they can control the classroom without having to negotiate with a bunch of kids. You tell them what to do or there's consequence. And then they need to be paid more and not with a tax increase, a real tax increase based that's sustainable based on a salary schedule that's merit-based so that they can look ahead into the future and say, oh, I should be able to expect to be making this much money in five years with good performance. And then it's not at the, at the, uh, the whim of taxpayers because if, if you give them this raise now in Pasco County, they're gonna get a $3,700 a year raise. It's gonna cost them $300 in their own property taxes. So they're paying for their own raise. And we're still not competitive with Pinellas, Hillsborough and Hernando County. So why would anybody move here when they can go to Pinellas, make more money, have world-class beaches, fully developed infrastructure? They're not, we're not going to accomplish the stated goal of recruitment. Uh, so I want to give them a, a, a sustainable, meaningful raise. So there's more to say, but I don't want right, to Right, right. Well, I de definitely, I believe that the bureaucracy has grown so big and eats up way too much of the uh, public school budget. It's so tripled. It's more than triple. Yeah, the yes. And that is not classroom teachers in the cl in the classroom teaching our children. Um, you probably could strike through a number of those and no one would ever know. Well, it's I believe that the, 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 the administration has grown by more than 40 percent in the last nine years. The teacher's core has grown by only 16 percent. And the student uh, uh, non charter school students are less than nine percent in the last nine years. Wow. Yep, you see where the money goes. And elementary school has actually contracted. Oh my goodness, wow. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so the law, well, right? Okay, well, thank you for those three <clears throat> issues that you elaborated on. So we'll turn it over to understand about, uh, there's a lawsuit you filed recently. So mm -hmm. tell us about that. Well, I've lived in this district for 12 years. And um, I think it's important that the people that live in any district know the culture of that district, are members of that community. Um, so I had, uh, I read a Tampa Bay Times article there where uh, the, and I already, I, had, I, I was, you know, Al Hernandez, the guy that running, he had admitted that he didn't live in the district when at the time of qualification. He was just about to move here. There's the legal aspect of, of are, are you a qualified resident at the time of qualification, which was noon, June 12th, or June 17th. But there's also the, the cultural aspect of federalism. And there's a reason why we have districts because the people here on the east side of the county, we're not, we're, we're dissimilar from the people that live in Gulf Harbors, which those are wonderful people. And, Someday, Mrs. Meisner and I will probably live there. Um, but that's a different culture there, right? It's a boating culture. It's, it's marine. This is a, we're agrarian over here, right? So that's just two very distinct things. And then there's Wesley Chapel, which is the shopping district of the county. And that's a wonderful place, too. And then there's Hudson, right? And there's, those, that's a different district. They're nice people. 
but they're, we're all unique. And so I think the people in, 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 in District 1 on the eastern half of the county should have one of them represent them. And I'm, I, I know for, for positive that, that Al Hernandez moved here re, just recently. I don't see how he can know much about this community. Plus, if you look at the demographics, the guy makes a half million bucks a year, which God bless him. I, I'm no problem by him making money, but he's probably the most wealthy person in Zephyr Hills. <laughs> or, I mean, it, it was, I, I don't see him being representative. But is he actually culture. living at the address that he stated on his candidacy paperwork? I, well, I think he is now. But it was it was after I believe it was after the qualifying day. So, so, so he's living in the Zephyrville's home, and he's totally moved out of where. Where was he living before? Oh, a beautiful neighborhood called Greyhawk. Really nice place. It's very similar to like Camp of Palms. Um, so he it's a forty four hundred square foot house there that's got a beautiful pool on a tranquil lake. Every blade of great glad grass is manicured behind gates. Uh, you know, just, and, and everyone there is, it's a, it's million dollar house after million dollar well, house. You would you know? expect a healthcare executive. Exactly. To and right. God bless them. I have absolutely, I have no dislike for Al personally. I don't dislike him at all. I, I wish he would, I just wish he would run in his district. That's all I ask. That's all that would so, matter to me. So where, <clears throat> so where's the property that he's living in and, and what is it compared to where he supposedly moved from? Oh, it's a significant departure from the place in Greyhawk. It would probably fit in the garage in the place in Greyhawk. It's uh, it's an 800 some odd square foot, 65 year old uh, house in a really it's a quaint lower middle class neighborhood <clears throat> filled with hardworking people. Uh, that's that's the typical Pasco resident is the people that live in that neighborhood. Which, by the way, Al said reminded him of Cuba. In the newspaper, oh my um, you can't make that stuff up. <laughs> um, so, uh, but you do know, you, that, is he actually he, on, living there? Is he actually living there? Did he move well, his mean, belongings in? <laughs> no, you. I well, I mean, I can't imagine you could fit all the stuff from that massive house in Greyhawk into that little tiny house. So, I, I, I just don't. I have a hard time accepting or believing that he plans to live there for the next four years. So, and you're definitely questioning that he was not living there because perhaps it wasn't even livable on June 17th? That's what he said. Al's a nice guy. He's been nice to me. I don't, this was such a struggle to do, to, 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 I, the whole legality thing is detestable to me. Uh, I just don't like this lit litigation, but... It, but you felt that you needed to do something because you want the letter of the law to be followed. I want the law to be followed. And I also believe that um, if I didn't challenge Al and either prove in court that he was a lawful resident and therefore he's inoculated if, from a future lawsuit from, from Jimmy Washington, if I didn't do this now, and let's say I don't, I don't make it past the primary and it's just Al and Jimmy, then I think Jimmy would have sued him. Uh, he would have been a fool not to, and he would win. And so now we're going to have the most radical of radicals uh, uh, walking onto the school board. And that's, that's one of the, that's my, my biggest concern. And, and the way this is structured, uh, if, if, if Al does win the, the suit, He's protected. He, he now he can't be challenged. So you know, I'm 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 genuinely I'm I'm genuinely selfish, selfless in this, because I'm 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 if I don't prevail in the lawsuit, then Al will probably go on and win, and he can go on unchallenged. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. So what is the status? Uh, well, before I go that, you also. Uh, questioned the other candidate running there's three candidates in that race you and two others the other candidate running and yeah. whether he was living in the district um, on june 17th yeah it's totally unclear about how where he was living because he was 
he was being evicted from his uh, apartment in Hudson. Um, which, which is I, like I mean, on the total other side of the county, right? Uh, the opposite corner. It's, a, it's <laughs> like an hour and 15 minute drive. Um, District 5 is what that is. Um, and so he was being evicted on the day of qualification, June 17th. And then the court issued a writ of possession on the 24th. Well, okay, so there's an indication there that he's living someplace else and being forced out because of writ of, writ of possession. And then I asked him, we, we were at a, at a, at a forum with the West Pasco Realtor Association Forum, and they said, what's unique about your candidacy? <clears throat> and I thought for a second, I thought, you know, I think I'm the only legally qualified person that lives in the district. And, and I said, and Jimmy's, Jimmy's filing paperwork lists an address in Hudson. Um, so, and I just looked to my list and I just, Jimmy, do you live in the district? And he, and he never said, I live in the district, the district, which is what, the center of the county. What right? did he put on his paperwork? Um, well, a, a PO box in, in St. Leo. That, is that, is that okay with the supervisor elections or? Well, apparently, <laughs> he's not the only one that listed. Because <laughs> Al listed a PO box too. Um, and, and I mean, look, Corley is just a he has a ministerial duty here. He's 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 basically a traffic cop. He's just pulling in information, making sure it's in order, and it making the information public. Right, so, right. So he doesn't have the ability to do anything. Um, well, so he says. But I, I got to tell you, I. I I would like to see that that supervisors elections, if they're not required to do some uh, verification, they should be. That would probably require statutory change. At the I'm, state I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, again, I'm not. It's not that I have. I have no personal dislike for quarterly either. And I mean, you know, and with Jimmy, Jimmy and I, I was we we knew each other in high school. We graduated together. He was a fun kid. Um, he, something happened though. He's not so funny. So, so where, what is the status of the case uh, at this point? And what exactly are you looking, how do you, how would you like to see it resolved? Uh, well, it, it basically everything's going to sit until August 30th. And the way I would like to see it resolved, I, I wouldn't, I, if these two prove that they live in the district, then I fold up the tent and go away. Um, I, a resolution to me is serving the kids and the teachers and the parents. That, so if, if it's me, fine. I, I think I can do the, exactly the things that are, are, are the best for the county. If it can't be me, then I want it to be Al. While he's an establishment Republican and I, you know, I, I don't care for the, the people that, that put party before other things, uh, before principle, uh, he's better than, than having a radical leftist in there. So, um, but but at this point, nothing will happen before the primary. So no, that's correct. The with primary three in the race, there's a good chance that it'll go to the general election. So could August thirtieth so, uh, impact the general election? Yeah. So so yes. Well, it, it, so the prime no August thirtieth is prior to the general, right? So mm -hmm. you have the twenty third, which is the primary, and there's one of two outcomes is what we're looking at here. Basically, either one first candidate gets 50% plus one vote, and then there's no general mm -hmm. election for District 1. Or one, two of us, three, you know, none of one, no one gets 50% plus one, so the top two ascend to November 8th. Um, if it's, I mean, the, I guess the best outcome is I just win the primary. That takes the burden off of everybody. And this just goes away, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, but but the thing is, is that Al's got tons and tons of money. He's got the establishment backing. Everybody and their brothers endorse him because they think he's the strong horse. So they want to pick the, the guy that's going to give them, you know, the best. Uh, I'm not saying it's corruption. I'm just saying that that you know you can get recognition, I guess. Uh, so he's gotten a ton of money. He has a lot of, of backing. Okay. And you know, I don't, I'm, I mean, A, I, I, unfortunately, I'm just, I'm not a great campaigner. I don't raise lots of money um, and, and I'm funding this largely myself. So 
Um, I mean, at this point, we're just gonna get through this primary race. We'll have to see what happens on August 30th. Well, could be done, could be over. It, I guess it, it is possible that it, it But could most be of the time in these types of races, the votes are split and it goes to the general election. Is the district a Republican leaning district? Oh yeah, there's, okay. more, there's more independents than Democrats in Pasco. Okay. So there's a good possibility, perhaps, that the top two would be the two Republicans that, that go forward anyway. Um, well, let's try to wind this up. So I'm going to turn it back to you to kind of end up, tell us exactly, you know, what you want to conclude with and what you want your voters to know and where can they go to help you? Well, the simplest thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not bought by anybody, and you know the Republican Party uh, did take them long to realize that, that they're not going to control me. Um, I'm not. I'm here for. I'm a, look. The county made me. I was a parent, and then I, I, I tried to make. I saw things I wanted to change, and I couldn't do it on my own as a parent. So now I'm going to try and take the place over. And have an influence on the outcome of events as a board member. So the the objective here is to help the students get them rigorous training, and then give them a climate where uh, there's there's they're, 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 they have a sense of discipline, and they have a sense of that they're not going to be abused by fellow students that misbehave. And then I want to give the parents the sense that uh, you're not excluded. I mean. There's these giant fences all around the, the, the every school, um, and, and and parents literally have absolutely no access to their children while they're while they're they're on campus. So I think the parents have been pushed away and pushed away, especially throughout COVID. They've been thoroughly pushed away even more. Um, and then the teachers, we got to get these teachers, uh, get them some authority, uh, and uh, bus drivers and crossing guards and front end staff and maintenance people. Everyone deserves. Uh, more money uh, so that's and then and just get the fiscal house in order because the the county has tons of money we've got to get this place under control i'm not sure where all the covid money went so uh provide your website if people can go to it and they can uh check you out or donate it is steve for pasco kids.com so it's the number four steve for pasco kids.com Unfortunately, we can't accept donations uh, unless I ascend to November uh, anymore. As of last night at midnight, that oh, got turned right. off. Right. Um, it, uh, so we, would, we appreciate point, everybody who did donate, though. All right. I, yes, I did forget about that. But early voting continues, I believe, through Sunday with primary election day on August 23rd on Tuesday. So we hope that the voters in Pasco will get out and vote. Primary elections tend to be low turnout, but... You know, we'll wait and see. I, I think this one's actually going to be pretty high turnout. Yeah, that's right. You have a you have a tax on that one too. Those uh, uh, sneaky little people that keep doing that in the state of Florida. <laughs> well, we, when we were door knocking, election. we would go out door knocking in the evenings, and I would say a third of the people were like, "Oh yeah, I'm on this school board thing. Go tell me tell me about yourself." Good. So the, the, this is a lot of people pay attention. School board, look, this county is in shambles. I, I, I'm yet to run into a, a parent who's had a pro positive experience with the county. Well, that, that is a shame. And I do think that the mom and papa grizzlies, they've had enough. So um, it's I the moms to... that are going to make the difference. It's the moms. the moms, but there's a lot of dads out there too. So I just want to thank you for, for taking your time with us today. And again, this is Sharon Calvert with Eye on Tampa Bay. I've been speaking to Steve Meisman. He is a uh, candidate running for Pasco County School Board District 1. So don't forget to get out and vote. His primary yeah. election day is the 23rd. Thanks again, Steve. Have Thank you very time. much. This has been a lot of fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.